Okay, let's look at this Grover Washington record. So how easy is that for you to find uh, a sample in that frequency? So today we're going to be talking a little bit about sampling, right? That's what the channel is about, sampling. Uh, but today we're going to talk about this specific technique that I wanted to share with you. It's it's old technique. A lot of people have used this, uh, but I think it has been forgotten over the years because machines get better and better and some of these techniques kind of fade out throughout the years. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of layering samples. If you watch any of my videos, you know that I put a lot of samples together. I stack a lot of stuff together. And I've, that's how I started making beats and that's how I do my beats today. And over the years, man, I think my mind just kind of went from picking samples uh, for their instruments, like I want a, a saxophone or I want a piano. And went from that to actually hearing the spectrum, I'm listening to the beat and I'm like, I need, I need a sample that's around that frequency or I need maybe something that's lower in frequency. Um, so a lot of the times when I'm sampling, I'm not imagining uh, an instrument per se, but I'm, I'm looking at the, the frequency spectrum. So that's a lot, that has a lot to do with the technique that we're going to be using today. And it's, called, it's using filters, right? And of course, filters, we still use these filters today, but the way uh, I'm sampling using filters is a bit different. So because the sample is getting better and better nowadays, we just sample into the machines and then we apply filters. You know, samplers like the, the 1200, the 60, most of these samplers wouldn't have filters. So the way to get around that would to was to just sample as you're listening to the sample. So, you know, you would have to have a mixer in between and just cut the lows or cut the highs depending on what you want to sample. So before you would sample, you would have to EQ the sample and sample it as it is, like straight into the machine. And there's no way for you to get back uh, to the original because it would be sampled at that frequency. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna grab some records, I have a beat running, and I'm gonna be listening to the record with the filter turned on. So by using this technique, it really opens up a new perspective while you're listening to the record. It's like you're listening to a whole new record when you're listening to it this way with the filter turned on. You know, I'm gonna show you the beat right now. This is the beat that we're gonna be working with. And funny enough, this sample that you're actually hearing right now was sampled that same exact way. I was using my 2000 Classic and I was using that same technique. I was listening to a, a record and I had the filter turned on. So this was sampled already with that filter turned on. So this had a lot of bass on it. It had a bass player, drums, and stuff like that. But because I was listening to it with a higher frequency, just letting, letting pass just high frequencies, I was able to perceive the sample in a different way. Okay, the best thing to do is actually show you how it works, okay? But we're gonna be using this beat. We're gonna turn off this sample right now, and we're gonna be using just the drums and the, and the piano. So that's what we're gonna be working with. Just some records that took off the shelf. We're gonna try them on, having the high pass filter on, on the MPC, and we're gonna find some samples this way. Okay, so I got a record here from Lonnie Smith. I'm gonna go into my sampler, and I'm gonna open up a high pass filter. Okay, high pass filter on the input. We're gonna play the record and listen to the record with a high pass filter on. So, just to compare, let's listen to it without the filter. Right now I have my, uh, my filter turned at 1K74, okay? And so it's cutting everything below that.
Okay, let's grab let's grab some miles. And let's listen to this. So I, in this case, there's a lot of there's a lot of hi hats going on, you know. Uh, so what we can do sometimes as well is instead of using a high pass, I use um, a band pass. So it kind of just focuses on certain frequencies. So if you notice now, comparing it to the other filter. A lot of those higher frequencies above 5K are gone. We're just listening to around 2K right now. And it kind of focuses specifically on a certain frequency. So yeah, that's definitely a sample right there. That's something that you can cut and then chop it and place it on top of the of the sample. Okay, so that's I was actually swiping through the frequencies to see where the sweet spot was. Because we have new samples nowadays, you can actually sample it without the filter and then turn the filter later on so you have more room to work that way and be specific about what you sample. But still, the technique is the same. For you to listen to the sample, you have to have the filter turned on and listen to it that way. Okay, let's look at this Grover Washington record. So how easy is that for you to find uh, a sample in that frequency? You know, mostly what we're hearing right now is saxophones, trumpets, and stuff like that. But if you, if you would have other records that would have like vibraphones or harp or, or you know, uh, instruments that go around that frequency, it's easy to listen to just those and, you know, take out the bass because sometimes the bass is the thing that doesn't really allow you to to understand if there's a sample in there or not you know so this is really the technique we're going to just do this a little bit more Just makes it a lot easier to find cuts this way. I'm sure you guys by now already understood how this works. I'm playing the record, having the filter already turned on, makes it much easier to listen to the sample coming in. Uh, of course, I'm specifying around a frequency. Right now, I'm around uh, 2K, playing with a band pass, so it's easier for me to dial in with a band pass. It's easier to dial in the frequency that I want to listen to with with a, with a filter. Okay. Just to kind of exemplify, I'm going to sample something and drop it on top of the beat.
Yeah, this is uh, it's a bit random, but you know it's much easier to to find samples this way. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I think it's a great technique in case you guys are trying to layer samples, trying to find samples, and it's hard for you to to kind of layer stuff together. This might really help you your workflow. So that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. If you feel that this is helpful, if you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up, comment as well, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Take care.